Okay, if I sell at par, meaning I got $10,000 from the folks out there for my $10,000 bond, it's pretty simple accounting. I receive $10,000 and I have a bond payable for $10,000. I owe them. So on the issue date, this is all that I will put. However, that changes when I sell at a discount because I only received 96% of face value. Well, guess what? $10,000 times 96% is $9,600 in cash that I received for that $10,000 bond. Yes, at the end, I still have to give them $10,000, even though they only gave me $9,600 up front. So, my bond payable is still $10,000, but I'm out of whack here, aren't I? Okay, this is what I have to do. Discount on bonds payable is a contra liability account. Remember contra asset accounts like accumulated depreciation? Well, bonds payable is a liability. So this is a contra liability account that goes with bonds payable and the discount goes there. Now, I will have to debit the discount for the difference and now I'm in balance. So that's how that's recorded at the issue date. Let's look at the premium. I received 102% of face value. Well, that's going to be $10,200 of cash. But guess what? Lucky me, at the tail end, I still only owe the bond payable. It's still only $10,000. But I have to account for that premium on bonds payable with another contra liability account. But this won't get debited. This gets added as a credit right there. So that is how, on the original issue date, how we add a bond payable to our records, our financial statements, on the day of issue, whether we issue it at par, at a discount, or at a premium. But wait, there's more. We do have to pay interest on this bond. So how do we do that? Now remember, bonds pay interest semi-annually. So an interest is a write-off if we're paying it. So we will have interest expense in all three cases because it doesn't matter how we sold it, par, discount, or premium. We're still going to have to pay the 8% annual interest. However... How do we calculate what's really due? And the formula is interest equals the principal, which is the face value of the bond, times the rate, the interest rate, times the time that the interest is accruing. So in this case, our interest is, principal will be $10,000, our rate is an annual rate of 8%, which is 0 0.08, times the time. Now, here's the tricky part. Since our rate is an annual rate, our time must also be in terms of annual or years. Our time for a semi-annual amount, interest is going, we issued on January 1st, interest is going to be due on the 1st of July and then January 1st of the next year. So let's say it's 1 July and we need to know how much interest to pay. We're talking six months later. So six months later, it's six of 12 months, basically, or we could put 0.5 of a year, however we wanted to do it. And that's what we would calculate. We, If it was three months that it expired before interest was due, we'd put three out of 12 months. So the answer here is going to end up being $400 a payment that we owe. So how do we go about doing that? Let's handle the PARF situation first. We have interest expense of $400 due on June 30th or July 1st. And we're going to have to pay that with cash. 
So we know we're going to be out cash, so we credit cash $400, and we expense it right away to interest expense. Pretty simple. But what about the discount situation? Well, once again, we have to pay $400 in interest expense. So just like before, we're going to put, we're going to take four hundred dollars out of cash and credit it, and we're going to debit interest expense for four hundred dollars. But our discount on bonds payable is also interest expense. It's considered interest expense that we had to pay up front of four hundred dollars. It's money we were out of pocket. Anything that affects our out of pocket expenses is a write off. And in this case, we consider this discount on bonds payable as interest expense we had to pay up front because we did not receive $400 of value for our bond. It's the same. So we have to bring the discount down to zero across the life of the bond. Now, how do we do that? Well, there's a $400 discount. We know it's a four-year bond that makes semi-annual payments, so there will be eight payments. We are going to do straight-line amortization. Big word. Essentially, we're, it's like depreciation, but on an intangible asset. We can't call it depreciation. We call it amortization. We have to make it go away, essentially. So one-eighth, one, one payment's worth of the $400 is also brought into interest expense. And if you take $400 and you divide by eight, that means each of those payments we are going to amortize $50 of it to interest expense. So, essentially, by the end of eight periods and the bond payables due, there'll be no discount. It'll be zero. That's what we're after. But we don't do that in two different steps. We would just put 450 interest expense. So we would say credit cash 400, credit the discount on bond payable, 50, and then we would do interest expense just to balance. Now let's look at our premium. Once again, the premium has to go away, but this is considered interest expense. We were already reimbursed, so it's like negative interest expense. So how do we go about that? Well, once again, we're going to make our $400 interest payment, and we have to make the premium on bonds payable go away. Well, it's across four years, but it's $200, so 200 divided by 8 is $25. So we would have to make it go away by debiting the premium. Well, we don't put that here. It doesn't look like that where we credit interest expense. First of all, you can never credit an expense account. So the way that works is it just reduces the interest expense and it's marked like this where we would debit cash, I'm sorry, credit cash 400, debit the premium on bond payable and then do interest expense to balance it. Now, what does that look like visually? It looks like this. I'm going to draw a graph. Our $10,000 bond at par value is this line here across four years. If we had the bond at $9,600, the discount, where we have a $400 difference, would look like that, or the premium of 100 and, oops, got my comma in the wrong place, $10,200, dollars 
where the difference is just 200. We have to make that difference go away across the life of the bond, and it goes to interest expense. So each year we already know, well, actually, it's eight periods. Each of these, we know we're going to do $400. There'll be eight of those minus 400s because it's 8% a year, so it's 800 a year. But we also have to include in this. And this is straight line to make it go away. We have to reduce the premium here down to zero so that at the four-year point, the premium is gone or the discount is gone. So each of these periods right here, if it were sold at a discount, we would also have minus 50, minus 50, minus 50. Every single one of these periods showing that we have 450 in interest expense. But if it's a premium, it goes the other way. So it's actually a plus 25 every time to interest expense. So it ends up, these amounts get added to the interest expense. And that's a visual of what a very fancy term. You just did this. You amortized the discount or premium, whichever one applies, on bonds payable. So whenever you want to impress somebody at a wonderful gathering of your friends, you can talk all about amortizing the discount or premium on bonds payable, and they're going to be quite impressed.